book that I interviewed you on for Nafas <laughs> Television. So that's kind of cool because I got to play host and interview you for that. And I remember once when I was saying goodbye at the end of that meeting, I looked over to you and I have your book and I'm like, so tell me that. And you were like, why did you do that? And I said, because it's going to fade out and it's going to look like we're still talking about your book while it's fading out. <laughs> it would just look appropriate for TV, I thought. So, but anyway, that was cool that you shared those two poems from that book. And yes, I do remember the interview of you that was on TV. Yippee skippy. And I do check to see periodically daily. All right, Nafas, they do replay things. Might that be on again and be able to watch it again? But anyway, thank you very much, Susan. I'm going to read poems because we've gone through the first round. It's not an hour and a half already. And I said we're doing a full two hours. And what's all that about? So I'm going to have to be quick with this now that I've just talked too much. I'm going to read to you um, the short poems that appear in the volume 199 issue of Down in the Dirt magazine. Volume 199 is called Tracks, uh, named after something within the book. This is just some tracks that were somewhere, I think, near Paris, I think. I don't know. There you go. But I'm going to first share with you two poems from this that are um, Twitter length periodic table poems. That's why they're short. They also appear in the book Twitterverse periodic table poetry. So I have to do two of them, two books, two books in one. Um, this first one, and they're both related to sodium, the element sodium. Uh, the first one is Sodium Worth Your Weight. <sighs> Currency for American Roman soldiers. Its English name is derived from the word salary. Sodium in medieval times was used to cure headaches. So when you're asked if you're worth your weight in salt, know the real weight of the question. As I said, those come with an image, and I happen to have it on a screen as well, which is really hard to see here, but they're also in the book as well, so I'm trying to show something in color. It's a pile of salt on a bunch of bills. That's, you know, what that is for it. Anyway, the next one, just because I want to speed through these things as we're going so much on time, um, this next one is sodium. Oh, here's your science lesson, science lesson. Um, sodium turns into quantum tornadoes. Ultra-cold sodium gaseous atoms rapidly spin into needle-like strands, and on the quantum level, they form crystal mini-tornadoes. <laughs> Scientists know you see the evolution of rapidly rotating quantum gas, like Earth's magnetic or weather patterns. And I thought sodium was only for salt. And it is the coolest thing when you look at the science and you can see what they do with these things on a microscopic level, that they're actually turning into little tornadoes as they're spinning through things, which is really the coolest kind of thing. But I do have one more that I'm going to share with you from Trax, from the Down the Dirt new, brand new issue. It also happens to be in the um, Women's History Month book this year that's called Shattering the Glass Ceiling. Um, it is a poem that is titled White Knuckled. And I'm going to open it up to this because it also exists in Slovak in both of the books. It's bigger in this one, so I'm sure you can't see it, but I'm just letting you know it is there. This is a poem that is in both of these books, and it is called White Knuckled. The hot air was sticking to her skin, almost pulling, tugging at her very flesh as she walked outside down the stairs from the train station. Just then a breeze, hot and sticky, it hit her in just the wrong way, brushed against her lower neck, and she felt his breath again. Not his breath when he raped her, but, but his stench, hot, rank, when he was just close to her. Her breath quickened, like, like the, the catch of her breath when she has just stopped crying. All of the emotion is there, not going away. She walks to the bottom of the stairs, railing, white-knuckled by her small, tender hands, the hands of a child. And that 90 degrees breeze suddenly gives her a chill. They say when you get a chill, it means a goose walked over your grave. She knows better. She knows that it is him walking, and that he trapped that child in that grave. And thank you. And, I, and I'm going to throw a shout out to Wes on that because nobody knows. And I say the train station. I always envision the L train walking down the train station when I, when I have that one. Just That's just a little sign for you because you know the town. And, and, and I, well, because those were sure, I'm going to do one more um, very, sh uh, very woman's issues poem that will be in the future related book called Testament. Testament. 
2023 book from Cyberwit Press, one of mine new, um, and this is titled Equality Doesn't Mean Removing Rights. The other day was the anniversary of the day the 19th Amendment was certified in the United States, giving women the right to vote. In anniversaries past, I have reflected upon how we women have come a long way, baby. <laughs> but we still have to keep looking happy. Like, we must be grateful for all women's strides because me that men have allowed us to accomplish and to succeeding while we're still under your thumb. So I thought it was funny to see that yesterday our U.S. president called it Women's Equality Day. And at the White House, they'd focus the day on abortion rights. <laughs> How good of them when another government branch, possibly rightfully so, overturned Roe v. Wade to allow the states to decide. I don't think the entire country realized what a giant catastrophe that might be for over half of the people in this nation. I didn't know if the White House would have some sort of festival for the day or what until I heard that they actually met with state and local leaders to discuss ways to safeguard access to abortion, which has been under such duress, in such peril, since it seems half of these states now stole women's basic rights. In fact, the president continues suggesting that the only way to reverse this injustice is in our future voting rights. So, it's appropriate on the anniversary of the day we gain the right to vote, that I hear his call, today of all days. <laughs> Have you ever heard the allegory, the story, that a baby maybe seem content on their own, but show them a treat, let them hold it for a while, then abruptly take it away from them. <laughs> That's when the baby starts crying, now robbed. <laughs> This is what goes through my head now after women have made such important, such accomplishments in life after being held back so long. And then, with the stroke of a pen, it seems that floodgates have been opened for, from usually rural conservative white men to bring women back to the dark ages again. They say we've accomplished so much, and then they have to wonder, have we really? Done. <laughs> done. I have to announce doneness. Um, thank you guys so very much. I Looking at the clock, it is over an hour and a half. I was going to say, we're, and I said we can run over to do another round, but should we for the next round, except for Wes Hine, you can do as long as you goddamn like. Um, we, should, we should shorten our, our readings a little bit just because I don't know how much longer it is for anybody else. Is that cool? Since we've been taking so long with the first round and I'm talking too much and if that's all cool with everybody. Because then in this round, of course, John F. McMullen, you are first. However many you would like. I'm going to say you can read whatever you like to because you host this thing. You have... You have co-supreme authority to do whatever you like John F. McMullen and then Wes Hein will follow him and then Richard Kent will follow him. If that's all cool with everybody then I will shut up and hope that John F. McMullen will be able to start. Are you ready to take it away my darling?